These are the extra map questions from 2022. Um, so let's just go ahead and do them. Toss a coin, probability landing on heads is cos squared alpha, which means, of course, that the probability of landing on tails is 1 minus cos squared alpha, which you could write as sine squared alpha. I just decided to do a binomial here. Um, so the probability lands heads two or more times is, well, the probability lands on heads two times is this, three choose two, and the probability lands on heads twice, and the probability lands on tails once. But then, of course, you could do it three times, so it's this. So I'm just, you could draw a probability tree, of course. I'm just, we all know binomial, like the 12 stats, so let's just do binomial. Of course, at this point, I realized all the answers in sign. So I'm actually going to do this strategy, but backwards. I'm going to say the probability of landing on heads is 1 minus sine squared, and the probability of landing on tails is just um, sine squared. Uh, and likewise here. And now if I just expand this out, this is 3, this is 1, of course. So just do a bunch of expanding. You get all this, a bunch of collecting, a bunch more collecting, and you get eventually this answer here, which is good to go. B then. So at 0, you have e to the power 0 minus e to the power 0, which is 1 minus 1, which is 0. So the graph starts at 0, which means d is gone. If x becomes really, really big, you have e to the minus a massive number, which is basically 0, minus e to a, minus a massive number, which is basically 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Um, so that's e gone. Uh, and, uh, sorry, is that, why is this gone? Oh, because this, this wasn't at the origin, of course. Um, so that's e gone as well. Um, and now, what's the main difference between these graphs? Well, one of them is positive all the time, one of them is negative. So let's just try a number. Let's just put in x is 2. Uh, we get 2 e to the minus 1 minus e to the minus 2, which is 1 over e minus 1 over e squared. 1 over e squared is clearly smaller than 1 over e, and so therefore this is a positive number, and so therefore the graph is definitely A. For C then, uh, we saw something like this in the 2020 multiple choice questions. Uh, there are other ways around doing this, but I would just recommend um, two times by the denominator squared, because that way you're guaranteed to times by a positive, which means this sign doesn't need to change. I'm not going to expand anything out. I'm just going to times by x squared to get this. Then I'm going to move this object over here, whilst also, uh, I guess, first factorizing this object. What you notice here is that a bunch of stuff can factorize out from the main thing here. You can take an x and an x minus 1 out of both of these terms to leave behind an x, an x minus 2, and just a 1 on that bit there. Uh, you can expand this bit out. And uh, you can uh, maybe refactorize it, I guess, or can you not? No, you can't, of course. You've got critical values at 0, at 1, and then whatever the roots of this are. I'm not sure what this bracket is doing here. Um, now, I just complete the square, I think, on that very fast to see the roots are going to be 1 plus minus root of 2 when I rearrange that. So that's going to be the roots there. Uh, just This is a, a positive quarter, of course. I want it to be less than 0. Just draw it. It's got roots of 0, 1, some negative number, and some big positive number. So that's going to be this. The... Uh, times when this graph is below zero are between one minus root two, which is the one over here, and zero, and between one, which is this one here, and one plus root two, which is over here. That is this uh, condition here. So that will be C done. They've used this trick a couple of times now, so maybe worth bearing in mind. Quite useful. This is a circle, or it's not really, it's a disk between one radius one and radius two, because four is two squared. So draw that uh, at one and two. So we're looking to be inside this CD shape, um, although, of course, the people watching this channel don't know what our CD is, so whatever. And then we've got this uh, thing here. So there's a few ways you could deal with this. Um, uh, probably the most mathematical is to take away 3y squared from both sides and then factorize this. It can It's actually a difference of two squares as long as you consider 3 to be a square number. Uh, it's this. And now you've got two things multiplying to be bigger than 0 or equal to 0. That means either both of the things are positive or both of the things are negative. I'm kind of ignoring the equals case because I don't really need to consider it. Um, so I, I'm just going to say this, either they're both positive or they're both negative. Now here, you can rearrange all these things to get this and this, and you need both these to be true. So let's just draw the line y equals a third, uh, sorry, 1 over root 3x. That's just a line, of course, gradient 1 over root 3. So that looks like that. We want to be underneath that line. At the same time, we want to be above the line y equals minus that same thing of x. That's the line going this way. We want to be below this line, above this line, um, the only way that both of those conditions are met is in this region here. Or, of course, if they're both negative, that means this or this. We want to be above this line and below this one. That's this region here. So this is the picture we're looking for. You could also just think this one through logically, I guess. Like, if you want x squared to be bigger than 3y squared, you just need x to be much bigger than y. So you want to be closer to the x-axis than you are the y, which leads you to this sort of region. Same kind of logic to use the negative as well, and you get the same sort of picture. But in any case, um, this gradient is 1 over root 3, which means it goes across root 3 every time it goes up 1, which means gradient is 1 over root 3, which means tan of this angle is 1 over root 3, which is 60. 
uh, sorry, it's 30, tan of root three is 60, of course. Tan of 30 is one over root three. So if I'm, I, I'm now, of course, working out the area of this plus this, and I can just do, uh, I mean, in total, 30, 30, 30, 30, that's 120. Uh, I can just, I, I'm just going to do pi times four squared times 120 over 360, sorry, times two squared to make four, minus pi times one squared times 120 over 360. Um, and that will find me this area plus this area. Uh, this is four thirds and this is one third, which should take away to make three thirds, which is one. So that's just pi. And that will be our answer to part D. Uh, e then, so of course, draw the picture. You've got a circle going through 0, 1 and P, Q. And uh, you want this circle to apparently be tangent to the X axis. So this circle is going to have some kind of center, which is clearly at P over 2 and Q plus 1 over 2. So the radius of this circle is P minus P over 2, which is P over 2. That's the distance across here. Um, the distance up is Q minus Q plus 1 over 2. And if I just do some Pythagoras on that, I'll find the radius. However, if I want the circle to touch the x-axis, that means that I want this distance to also be the radius. And this distance here is just Q plus 1 over 2. So therefore, I also want the radius to be Q plus 1 over 2. So I want this thing to equal this thing. Um, I will just square both sides, of course. And uh, I, I wrote this as... 2q over 2, I guess, minus this makes just 1q, and you just get, and then minus to the 1 makes this, and you just get that. Anyway, I squared both sides, and now I, I think I'm just going to times the whole expression by 4 whilst expanding out some of these things. Lots of things cancel. You get down to this, which is one of the conditions that they give you. So that was quite a nice question. F, then, is also quite nice. We've got a geometric series here with um, first term 1 and ratio 1 plus x minus x squared. Now, that converges, according to this formula, as long as that r I mentioned, which is basically all of this, is less than 1, or the mod of it at least. So I think that's what I have to check. So, in fact, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that this turns into this, just because otherwise none of this makes any sense. So, okay, well, a is 1, r is this thing here, so put that in, in into this formula. This is just the a over 1 minus r formula. Uh, this cancel is you get minus, and minus it goes away, and you factorize, and yeah, cool. So this is fine, and this does make this, as long as this condition is met. Now to check, now of course what this means is that r is either greater than minus 1 or less than 1. So I think I need to check both of those conditions separately. So let's check that this is minus 1, or oh, sorry, less than 1 first, and then I'll check when it's greater than minus 1. So okay, the 1's cancel, this factorizes, this is a upside down cubic, sorry, quadratic, with critical values at 0 and 1. When's that less than 0? So picture the upside down quadratic in your head. It's less than 0 when you're to the left of 0 or to the right of 1. Um, so those would be our two conditions uh, for that. Uh, when we're doing um, greater than minus 1, let's do that. So we need to set this greater than minus 1. Um, I'm going to move everything to this side instead. It's the proper way up cubic. It factorizes, sorry, quadratic again. Not sure why I'm saying cubic. Um, roots are, or critical values at minus 1 and 2. Um, and you want to be less than, so you want to be in between them. Um, we want this thing and this thing to be satisfied at the same time. Um, so that means being between 1 and 2 and between 0 and minus 1 which I think is this condition here. So I think it does work for that condition. G then, this question is, is pretty weird because it's, it's about differential equations and it's so unusual. It's not, not, not something like they have ever already asked before. So how do we do this? Well, we notice all the answers are of the form k f of x. So we use that, right? We just assume whatever the answer is, it's of this form. Hopefully I can find the k later. Now what I'm going to do is differentiate both sides. Clearly dy of the x equals k f dashed of x. But dy over dx, assuming that this is correct, whatever, whatever this k is, is 2y to the quarter. Now, y to the quarter, um, based again on this uh, assumption, is just k f of x to the quarter. So I think I get down to this. Um, but okay, uh, now I can distribute this power quarter down to both of these to get this here. Um, I, I can also here, I guess, divide by k both sides. And for some reason, I've switched these two things over. So this has gone over here, this has gone over here. That's fine, I guess. Now, okay, now what, what can we say next? Well, we can say that, um, of course, f dashed of x um, is uh, just uh, dy by dx, because that's, uh, by definition, I guess, f dashed of x. That's what I've called it. I guess I could have called it dy by dx the whole time, uh, just because it's the derivative with respect to x of this thing here. Um, and that's equal to uh, this, which is being kept alone. And then f of x uh, is just y. Um, so I put that there. Now, if this is true here, bear in mind we know this to be true up here, right? And now I've got this in the form. Have I just written that again? Amazing. I've got this in the form, this. And now if I know this is true, then that means that this thing here must be 1. 
So now this is where I finally solve the code. So that was really weird, um, very unusual, not like everything they've really done before. At this point, it's nice and easy to buy by two, write it like this, I guess, raise the power of this if you want to, uh, sure. And you get this as your answer. Um, so the answer is this here based on our assumption. Really, really tough question, I thought. Um, H, also a really tough question. Um, although I will say, after even just a little bit of trial and error, you get that down to a 50-50 guess very quickly. Um, let me show you why. So if we have f of one is one, that clearly means f of two is also f of one, which means f of two is one. That means f of four is f of two, which is one. And so all of the powers of two are just one, uh, right? And then we think about um, three, and f of three is, is, is f of two plus f of one based on this rule here, where n is one, I guess, to make f of three is, I guess, f of one plus f of two, but it obviously doesn't matter. Um, f of two is one, f of one is one, um, so therefore f of three is two. That means if I double this, of course, following this rule, f of six is two, f of nine, uh, 12 is two, and so on. So any number of the form three times a bunch of twos gets me to two. Now, I'm trying to get to three, of course. Um, so, uh, and it also talks about n being a multiple of 35. So I thought about, okay, well, what happens if I, you know, 35 is five times seven. What happens if I think about how to get five and how to get seven? Like, does that, does that help? So where f of five is f of two plus f of three, which is one plus two, as we've decided over here, which is three. That means all the multiples of five multiplied by two only is also equal to three. That's not helpful because that's not of the form 35. It's interesting that we've made three though, which is what we're trying to find, but it, none of these are multiples of 35 because we need the seven. Uh, making seven, we've got the numbers we need to make seven. That's also three, but again, it's not particularly helpful because um, again, this isn't of the form 35. Now the trick that we need to say here, uh, hang on, I'll say first for the record as well, how did I know this is a 50-50 guess? Well, it's because of all this doubling nature, right? Like, let's pretend f of 35 was 3, and that gave us one solution. But that means f of 70 is 3. That means f of 140 is 3. That means f of 280 is 3, right? So as soon as you have one solution to this, the answer is going to be infinitely many because they're all going to be multiples of 35 if you just double over and over again. So basically, the answer to this question is either 0 and you can't find any, or infinitely many. So after a bit of trial and error, it was pretty easy to get it down to a 50-50 guess. How do we decide which one it is? Well, you, you use a bit of logic here. Um, both of these functions are, well, this one is, is strictly staying the same all the time. This one is strictly increasing because you're adding two numbers up that are both positive. We've only ever found positive integers here, and that's all we're ever going to find. So this is only increasing things. So how do we make a 3 here? How do we make f of n equal 3? Well, you either have a number that's already equal to 3, like we've got and double it, but as we saw, that's not helpful. Or you have to follow this rule and add up two things to make three. But the only two things you can add up to make three are one and two. And the problem is, is that not only do all the powers of two make one, they're the only numbers that make one. Because the moment you branch out, you get a bigger number and you can't make the numbers smaller again. So these are the only ways to make one. And likewise with this, these are the only numbers that ever will ever make two. Because again, the moment you go any further, you're going to get bigger and you can't go backwards. So the only things that make one are powers of two. The only things that make two are three times the power of two. So if you're trying to make two numbers add up to make three, you need to use one of these guys and one of these guys. And this is where this actually comes in handy because this is the these two examples here are the only way to do that. Because notice how the two things you're adding up, which I need to be one and two, some of these guys here, have to be consecutive, have to be consecutive inputs. And so how do we get a power of two to be consecutive with three times a power of two? Well, initially it seems completely impossible because powers of two are even and three times a power of two is also even. So how are two even numbers consecutive? Well, they are if you're power in these two examples here, where you actually haven't used a power of two. In this case here, you've just used three. Those are the only two examples that will do it. And they both aren't multiples of 35. They both make three, of course, but they're not multiples of 35. And so actually there are no ways of doing this. Um, so again, a, a tough question, um, but, but with a bit of thought, maybe doable. Uh, here, what I decided to do was bring the logs to one side so I could use the divide by law for logs, uh, then raise both sides to the power two and multiplied out and I got this thing here. I rearranged that for X. So I brought this X over, factorized and divided. And I thought about this object here. Now, X needs to be positive. I'm dividing two numbers here. So either I need both of these numbers to be positive or I need both of those numbers to be negative. Now, two to the power B is always positive because it's an exponential. So I, in this case, A needs to be bigger than zero. 
And over here, bring the 2b over to the other side. And uh, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. So b needs to be anything less than 0 to make that work. Now, so the condition here is a less than 0, b, sorry, a bigger than 0, b less than 0, which means a times b is, a times b is less than 0. Over here, um, again, 2 to the b is always positive, which means a needs to be negative to make that work. And here, bring the 2 over, and you end up with b, again, uh, exact opposite of this case, being positive, which means a, b still needs to be less than 0. So the only time I have a positive solution to this is both times lead to the same thing, is if a, b is less than 0. So I have a solution if a, b is less than 0. So there's only going to be one solution, right? There's nothing quadratic about this, just one solution. I have a solution if a, b is less than 0. And I think this is the only one that says that. So it's going to be this. I don't have any if it's bigger, because I'll get negative solutions in that case. This is the only solution here. So I think the answer is definitely C. And the last question, then, a, a really fun question, just because I like integrals, um, and I'm not afraid to say it. x to the minus 2, I can write like this. Now, I try. What, the idea here is to try desperately to make this integral. Now, I found two ways of doing this. I found the three blue, one brown method, and I found the what I thought was the expected way of doing it method. Um, I decided to consider what this was in partial fractions. Now, the reason I decided to consider that is because this is easy to integrate. This is quite easy to integrate because the top is the derivative of the bottom, although that's year 13 math. So I was a bit unsure about this, but I was hoping one of these or both of these would be zero and that would escape that case. And then I've got this here. Bear in mind, of course, this is, I, I think this is year 12 math. So although I'm starting to doubt myself now, when you've got a, a square factor on the bottom, you need to use the non-square version and the square version. And when you've got big, big polynomials on the bottom, you need to use a degree one less on the top. So that's why I'm using a cubic up here and a linear up here under the, the x squared. Now, okay, this fraction needs times by an extra x and a one x, one plus x to the four to make the same denominator. This needs times by no extra x's, but it needs times by that. And this needs times by two extra x's. So that's all I've done here, and that will all make one. You can do some expanding out. And then I just said, well, okay, a plus b is zero because there are no x's over here. C is clearly one because it's the only constant term and I have a 1 over here. Um, a plus b is 0, like I said. A plus b is still 0. Uh, sorry, a plus b plus d is 0 from the x to the 5s, because there are none over here, um, which means d is 0, looking at both those cases. So that's nice. Uh, looking at the 4s, uh, c plus e is 0. And uh, looking at the uh, next, uh, which means e is minus 1, because c is 1, cool. And looking at the f's and the g's, they're both 0, because there's no x to the 3s or x to the 2s over here. Now, I haven't solved for a and b, what I was hoping I could just say then is that a is one and b is minus one. I I, I just I so oh, no no I didn't even do that. I was even more lazy. I just said a was zero and b was zero, which meets a condition that I wanted for this some of this stuff to go away, so it's easy to integrate. So I just said a was zero, b was zero. If that's if a is zero, this goes away. If b is zero, this just becomes c over x squared, which is one over x squared. And then the only thing that's not zero here is e, which is minus one. So we end up with this here. And now this is perfect because this means I can write this integral as just 1 over x squared minus x squared uh, over this, which means, of course, I can just split the integral into 2, and I know the integral of this is just a. So I can just integrate this and take away a. The answer is clearly either 1 or e, depending on how I do it. The other way that I did all that uh, was the 3 blue 1 brown method, which is you just desperately find a way to add something just to take it away, to make it all great, um, and I notice I've got a 1 plus x to the 4 on the denominator here, which I would really like to go away. So if I just add x to the 4 only to take it away again, I can then split this fraction in half here under the same denominator. So I've just split that fraction in half there. And now, of course, x to the 4 over x to the 2 is just x to the 2 on top. And this cancels with this object down here to make a 1 over x squared. And you end up just with this here, which is exactly what I've been doing up here. Um, so that's the other way to do it. Of course, from here, this is super easy. 1 over x squared x to the minus 2. Just integrate this and put the bounds in. This is a based on the question. Um, and you get this, which is this, uh, which is the answer of e. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.